Hello and welcome to ArcFest. Uh, apologies for those of you on the hybrid, but we are starting now. So get that coffee settled on the desk and your croissants organized and your pens in a neat row. So my name is Professor Mark Gabbe. I'm director of the Applied Research Collaboration Northwest Coast. I need to read that, otherwise I forget. Uh, and I want to extend a very warm welcome to those of you in the room with us and to those watching at home or in your office virtually in our, or in our hybrid format, there was a funny noise behind me then, uh, which we are now becoming familiar with as we continue to use this moving forward to the end of the arc. It was always our intention from the clerk actually to try and use hybrid, but I think COVID forced organizations into properly investing in the technology that made it straightforward for people to either be in person or feel as if they were there in person with a good quality connection. And thank you very much for our colleagues here who are making that possible. Um, we want things to run smoothly, so please bear with us. Uh, and if there is the occasional technical glitch, which won't be their fault, especially when we're conducting the interactive conversation with the audience in the room and those remotely, please be patient. Oh yes, I've got to do this now, haven't I? Before we start, we at Ark Northwest Coast offer our sincerest condolences to the Royal Family on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We share in the grief of the whole nation at the death of our remarkable monarch and reflect with great pride upon her incredible reign. Perhaps it seems an appropriate time to take a couple of minutes or so to reflect on her passing, but also those of family, colleagues and friends that we have lost, particularly over the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's somehow fitting that we're having that slightly undercut by the sound of the E types warming up next to door to us. I think she'd be very happy about that. Um, during the period of national mourning, we will not be tweeting or retweeting tweets regarding today's ArcFest in accordance with the guidelines for NIHR infrastructures until after the 19th of September. As we move around the region, hey? yes. As we move around the region, ensuring meetings are accessible for our members, advisors and staff across the Northwest, we will continue to use different locations. And I can confirm the next ArcFest will be held at Chester Racecourse on the 13th of December. If you want any tips, Darren Shiman. So please ensure that this is in your diary. We don't want any non-runners. So looking forward to seeing you all then, but it'll be hybrid rather than thoroughbred. But that's enough of horsing around. It says here, pauses for raucous laughter. But, um, <laughs> I will be in the chair for today's proceedings um, today. And I just want to give out some housekeeping information for those of us today in the actual, not virtual rooms. No fire alarm is test is planned for today. So therefore, if you hear the alarm, please exit the building there or there, there are no overwing exits, you'll be pleased to hear, in a calm and orderly manner via the exit doors, which are marked clearly, and staff will direct and assist you if required. Bathroom facilities are available by all of the rooms, except for the Oak Suite, where they're just down the corridor within the business center itself. We're using three rooms here in Kendall, one of which is this area, which we're in now, known as the Function Suite. We're also using the Kendall Suite, which is where the hybrid health equity workshops are being held, and the Oak Room, which is where the races workshop is being held, and that's located in the business centre. The marketplace, which you can see around you, is also here in the function suite, and it will have representatives from all of our themes. So please do consult them with them on any projects you're working with on them, or to discuss their work and see if there are any ARC initiatives that your organisation could participate in or implement within their, your organisation. For our a virtual audience, please feel free to use the one-to-one -one engagement option to contact the teams. There are also virtual versions of the posters around the room today, so you can sample uh, 
see a sample of each of these posters from our theme, uh, from our interns' work, and from our PhD students' work. This marketplace will be available throughout the day, and lunch will also be served in here, so you can continue to engage with our teams uh, and um, also at the end of the day, after the workshops, our final session will be back in here. The races workshop is going to be very practical in tackling some of our members key research or evaluation questions, while our health equity workshop will help all who want to support us on ensuring health inequalities are tackled in the planning and implementation of the research of our research policy and our uh, general work. The races workshop attendees today had to apply and the teams have already been chosen for today and it's face to face only. But we will be holding it in the future so there will be other chances uh, to bring a team to learn how to undertake rapid evidence evaluations, which is what races stands for, and produce one together by the end of the workshop. So if you hadn't pre-booked or attending virtually, it's a parallel workshop streams for you. Please do circulate amongst the marketplace after I finish for about 30 minutes or so, which will be a bit less than that now because we started late. Um, but at 10 o'clock, we'll announce a reminder to go to your workshop rooms. Please do ask a member of our staff any questions you may have or if you need directions. A member of the MIDAS team will take people over to the Oak Room at 10 o'clock. For our virtual guests, there's some housekeeping too. Please be on mute until you're asked to speak to, by me as the chair and please unmute yourself when I ask you to speak. It's really important to remind all virtual guests to please follow the day by clicking the sessions tab on the left side of the platform menu as the day progresses. And that's very important because it's in bold and underlined. So it must be very important. You can see it has the times and titles of each session that you need to click into. Otherwise you'd be left behind and we don't want that to happen. Nobody gets left behind in our Northwest coast. There's technical support available via the chat function on the platform. So please do use that if required. So the aim of today is to provide updates about our work, collaborate together and identify opportunities where the wisdom of our research findings can be shared and implemented. This is knowledge mobilization in action. We learn from each other to develop and deliver our program then we take it back to our workplace to help improve how we deliver services and reduce health inequalities. And for me as an academic, that's true as well. I take back to university how we co-produce, how we use the public, how we can improve the quality of our academic research. It's not just about universities doing things to the workplaces. We're part of that membership. We're part of that workplace too. And we learn from each other. Our projects are at different stages. But we always need to work to collaborate together through involvement, a key focus of which is the pathway to implementation. So our work makes real improvements to the benefit of our populations, particularly those populations with the most pressing needs. The key point I'm trying to make is you are the collaboration. You compose it, and it is you who help make the arc a success. We are the arc together. Its legacy will be down to everyone here in person or online, actively contributing, spreading our work and encouraging colleagues and others to get involved. We're all invested in it being successful and need to be part of the strategy in championing findings and promoting the work that we do to make a real difference. Our launch event at Blackpool was nearly three years ago. And as a reminder, the Arc Northwest Coast is halfway through its five, live, five year cycle. Therefore, I think it's a very appropriate time to take a status look uh, and shot. Look, whoops, never mind. To take a look at where we're up to. Uh, before I move on to that, I hope you appreciate that we are. I mentioned Blackpool, so you've been to the seaside in Northwest Coast if you hadn't been there before, uh, and now we've brought you to the Lake District, which is one of the most beautiful part, certainly of Great Britain and probably Europe. So if you've not been here before, I hope you come back. It doesn't rain every day, as you can see, it's a gloriously sunny day today and tomorrow, and it is possible to walk in the Lake District and not get wet. 
but there are lots of shops that sell waterproofs. So always have one in your bag. So some fast facts about the Arctic Northwest Coast. There are over, around 60 member organizations. We have over 150 projects registered across our programs and over 80 registered public advisors. We have over 200 publications, um, 29 PhD students, 37 member research internships. Over a thousand people have attended our Arc Northwest Coast events. And our grant income overall is around over 60 million now uh, from external grants that we've supported or are part of. Uh, even in, in the last financial year, that was alone was 40 million. In more detail, all of our short-term objectives have been met. Um, there are some medium-term objectives we still like to do some more work on, which is why we're talking a lot today about our equity strategy and how we implement that across all of our work. We want to make sure that we always think about equity, and we've recently launched the Four Equity Toolkit, which is where the HIAT, the Health Inequality Assessment Toolkit, now sits, and it's got lots of resources there. So please do tell your friends who are doing research and your colleagues about that resource and encourage people to use it. The NIHR centrally is very happy with the work that we've been doing, and we passed as green in our each of our annual reports so far. And this has been despite the pandemic where we had to, I think the trendy term is pivot, both with what the staff were doing and what we were doing in our research to focus on pandemic related issues, as well as working with organizations where their emphasis was very much on managing and dealing with the pandemic and rather than the sorts of research that we had been doing and had been planning. And now we're at the stage where we're coming back to the pandemic as part of the underlying world and it's how we get back to the research program that we were working on before. So we have some important topics to focus on going forward. We still need to make sure that we're doing world leading research, that we're co-designing that, co-delivering that, getting external grant investment and keeping those publications and other ways of spreading our word out to the wider world. And I do mean world. We need to make sure we're speeding up the implementation of our work streams and findings through our implementation support and evaluation so that we can make real lasting impacts with our work. We need to be capturing and disseminating the impact of our work. We need to demonstrate the value of our work to our members and the wider world in the Northwest Coast and beyond. We need to be shaping a legacy that continues to reduce health inequalities for our region on a long-term basis. And we need sustainable changes that support members as learning organizations um, who also demonstrate what's called organizational excellence because they always think about how can I do this differently? How can I do this better? How can research help me in the work that I'm doing? What do we need to do to improve? And that's what ARC is really about, is helping support that cultural shift for our organizations. That's what we hope the member organizations get out of being part of the ARC. If there's another round of funding for the ARCs, then we'll need to come together fairly soon to start writing that new bid. But I want to demonstrate that where we've come to by listing some achievements that show that we are a proven vehicle of change and for delivering excellent work that makes a real difference in both health and social care uh, communities across our region, because NHR needs to convince Treasury that they get value for money from their considerable investment in the arcs across the country. And we want to be in there getting uh, that work demonstrated and showing what we've done. So I'm gonna flag up some examples and I'm well off the script now because of time. So don't worry about it, Darren. I get anxious looks from over here. So these are some examples of our work together. I'm not going to go through this because I'm catching up on time, but these just give you a flavor of the work we've been doing. That's what the marketplace is for. So please go around the marketplace and find out what we're doing. I'm not going to read through these line by line or the descriptions of what it's about. Please do ask colleagues around the room about this work. I'm not sure what the member offer. I think it's 10% off at Tesco, but um, I didn't do the slides, not entirely. 
sure there's a consensus member offer is. So the member offer is to strongly advocate for and support robust public involvement in research with our member organizations. I've just remembered what it's just what we've called it. So one of the things that we do about this equity strategy is we do equity. And I was just hearing uh, that we were doing presenting at a conference in Scotland yesterday um, in Edinburgh. And the comment on Twitter was great to hear that somebody's doing this really well and somebody's telling us how to do it. So we go out to our member organizations and say, if you want to use the public more effectively in your work and you need some help in that, we will support you in creating that group and in supporting that group and taking it forward. If you haven't been to one of our seldom heard voices fora, please do keep an eye out for that. They're great. They're talking to groups that very rarely get heard, particularly about what they think is the sort of research that will make a difference to them. So we've worked with the Roma communities, we've worked with adolescents, we've worked with migrant communities to get to hear their views about how health and social care research can make a difference to their lives in their communities. Uh, you'll hear a lot about the Corrin, I hope, today and in the marketplace. This is something we brought through from the Clark and it's really engaging with communities at the roots and working with the voluntary organisations and working with them around a research portfolio and getting their ideas of what makes a matter to their lives in their communities that they want us to help them make a difference around health and social care. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there because there are lots of exciting things that people want to do today. Great to see so many of you here in person. Great to see so many of you here virtually. Uh, enjoy the day. I hope you get a lot out of it. And I look forward to meeting some or all of you as the day goes on. Thank you.